Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus versus Classic painting tutorial, extravaganza, comparison, side by side, whatever you want to call it. Yes, we're doing another one, and today we are doing the Dark Angels. This was the most requested one from the last one that we did, under the comment section, and if you want to request the next one that we'll do, Write it down in the comment section and let me know. And do subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with these Contrast Plus versus Classic videos because I'm having an absolute blast making them and I want to make the ones that are most appropriate for all of you out there. So yes, we're doing the Dark Angels and, well, I'm quite surprised. We're doing Greenwing, not Deathwing, because I'm not going to paint a bone version in Classic because it just doesn't make sense. But yes, for the green wing, we have done this Contrast Plus versus Classic video, going through the kind of more traditional recipe and the kind of slightly newer, up-to-date Dark Angels recipe that we've got, courtesy of Chewy, who is one of my Patreons. And if you'd like to become a Patreon subscriber, you can. You can head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, or indeed you become a YouTube channel member. All of that good stuff. But without further ado, we're going to jump in and we're just going to start painting them. I mean, I've already painted them. This is me from the future. And I'm telling past me to do the painting, to jump in and start painting. Start now, past Josh. You're going to have a great time. So naturally, the first place we're going to start on our Dark Angels is on all of the armor. And as you can see, on the contrast side, we're going to be doing a pre-shade first rather than going straight in with Dark Angels Green because it is a slightly difficult paint to work with. It's very dark. It can get out of control very easily. So we're using Carandrus Green and we're applying that all over the top of all of the armor. We'll get a nice smooth coat here because we are going to apply that darker green over the top. And this will add some vibrancy to the Dark Angels Green but also just make it a little bit easier to apply. On the classic side, we're going to be doing a layer of Caliban Green. Nice and simple. You probably weren't expecting anything else. But we're just going to get this all over. We're probably going to have to do two thin coats here. In fact, we definitely are. I know this because I'm doing a voiceover from the future after having done this. So just make sure you get a nice coat of this all over. And then don't worry too much about getting it nice and kind of dark. Because we are going to be doing that second coat all over the top of all of the armor. So you don't really have to worry so much. Do pay attention to the contrast one, but have fun with the classic. Next up, as mentioned, we're going to be doing Dark Angels Green all over the top of the armor. Now, because Dark Angels Green, as already mentioned, is a difficult paint to work with, I'm going straight from the pot, but if you feel more comfortable, do grab a little bit of a puddle of this on your palette, sort of three or four brushfuls of it, and just add one or two drops of medium in there just to make it a little bit easier to run it across all of the armor panels. And as you can see, it darkens it down nicely. And, as already mentioned, we're going to do a second layer of Caliban Green all over the top of all of the armor. Now, Caliban Green is also a slightly dodgy paint. I think the greens from Games Workshop do struggle a little bit with coverage at times. So it might take you three coats in some places. Don't worry if it does. You just want to build up that really nice strong Caliban Green that you can see going down on the leg just there. Sticking with our classic marine now, what we need to do is add a little bit of shading. He's already quite dark as you can see after those two coats of Caliban Green. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a recess shade here of Null Oil. And this will just kind of pick out and reinforce those recesses and add some real depth to the model. It looks fantastic. You could use something like Bale Tan Green here if you wanted to make it even more green, but Null Oil is really good just for adding that kind of, that kind of barrier and that definite shadow in all of the dark places of the armor. So here we have it, both of the armor bits all done to a war hipster battle ready, of course. They're not fully finished. We've got a lot more warmth going on with the Dark Angels green one there on the left than we do on the Caliban green one. Caliban green one is probably closer to what you would consider sort of typical box art, but having that little bit of extra warmth in there puts him closer to the box art that we've got for Azrael, which might indicate that we're going to go a little bit warmer with future Dark Angels, which is... Very interesting. I thought his armor was just that little bit more bright, and I think it really, really works. And, you know, it doesn't make them almost black, which is what you can sometimes run into with Caliban Green and that kind of thing. But otherwise, I think they look pretty cool next to each other. That recess shading is really popping on the classic one. So, 
I guess we should probably move on to our next color, which is going to be all of the black. For our contrast plus marine, we're going to be using Black Legion. And we're going to be applying that over the tops of things like the little kind of soft joints in the armor details. These kind of bundles of cables and things. We're also going to be applying it over the top of a little bit of the gun casing. It's basically the handle or which his left hand is on. Uh, we're not going to be doing the belt because on Dark Angels they have a slightly warm brown leather belt, which is nice. For our classic marine, we're going to be using a bad and black, of course, and we're going to do two coats of this, but you don't necessarily have to do two coats. You just, you know, prepare for having to do it because there will be some points on the model where it won't go down as smooth or it won't cover quite as well, just because that's the nature of painting, particularly on the flat parts of the bolter casing, which we will obviously show off in just a moment when we get to the next clip. But, yep, we're going to do a bad and black over the same details here. And uh, yeah, here we are then. For our contrast plus marine, we are doing a second layer here, but it's not Black Legion. We're going to be doing Null Oil over the top. Now, we could do this later on with the metallic, but for the sake of fairness, we're going to pair it alongside now. So in order to get that to a war hipster battle ready, we're going to apply Null Oil to make it nice and smooth and shiny. And as mentioned, we're going to be doing a second layer of Abaddon Black in areas that we need to do it. And as already mentioned, this is going to be on areas of the gun because that's probably the place where you're going to see a little bit of thinness. There's enough recessing and stuff on the soft joints of the armor that actually it probably won't be too noticeable if you don't do two coats there. But definitely on those bolter casings. Here we are with all of the green and, and the black all done. As you can see, they're starting to come together. That black really defines the Space Marines, particularly once you get those soft joints on. It's one of my favorite things to do when painting Space Marines. You get that entire armor color down, and then you add the black in between, and it just kind of just puts so much emphasis and separation. It really draws the eye on all of those armor panels. It's really lovely, as you can see on both models. Not too dissimilar, in fact. What we're going to do, though, is we are now, and I'm not going to film it, but what we are going to do is we're going to neaten up all the areas that we've done some splodges with some wraith bone. So we'll come back in just a sec. And we're back. So what we're doing now is we're going to be painting in the brown leather. And for our contrast plus marine, we're going to use Saigor Brown, a really lovely dark warm leather color. And for our classic marine, we are, of course, going to use Rhinox Hide. I think Rhinox Hide is absolutely fantastic. I love this paint. Haven't used it in a long time for leather, but it absolutely looks amazing. We do, of course, though, have to do a second layer of Rhinox Hide because it is a very dark base color, and that is what we need to do in order to get a good, strong color out on our classic marine. We don't need to do this on the Saigor Brown one because if we do that, it'll come out really, really dark. So just don't worry about it. For all of our bone details for our Contrast Plus Marine, we're going to use Skeleton Horde. Nice and simple. We're going to apply this over the top of the parchment of the Purity Seal. And we are going to apply this over the top of the Aquila on his chest. And for our Classic Marine, we're going to use some Morgast Bone. Which isn't kind of a traditional paint for this. You'd normally use something like Xandri Dust. But Morgast Bone is just a little bit warmer and I prefer it for the Dark Angels. But, as per usual, this does mean we will need to do a second coat of more gas bone just to make sure it's nice and strong as a bone colour. Because whilst black or dark colours kind of need that definite second coat, the bright ones sometimes tend to as well. There's not many that don't require it. There is one which is coming up next where we didn't do two coats because it didn't need it. And that is, of course, the red, as you can see on the screen before you. But before we do that... We're going to be doing Blood Angels Red all over the top of the red details on our Contrast Plus Marine. So this is going to be remaining areas of the bolt casing. It's going to be the eye lenses as well. We're just going to drop that over the top of the green to get that kind of red background. And we're going to apply it over the top of the Purity Seal Wax Bit. And on our Classic Marine, the same details apply. But we're going to be using Mephiston Red, or Mephiston Red, I should say, for all of these details. And... As mentioned, it's just going to be one coat because I felt like it didn't need a second one, especially when we come to shading it later. Here we are then, both our marines looking at the same stage. They already look fantastic, but we need to paint in those emblems and this is going to be for the same each way that we're going to do this. We're going to do Korax White. We're not going to paint the classic marine in a 
more traditional sense of doing white where you would do celestra gray followed by a shading followed by ulswin gray that's just taking way too long and it doesn't really help here there is an alternate way which we're going to do things which we'll see just coming up next we're going to apply corax white over both and then for our contrast plus marine we're going to apply apothecary white over the top of the dark angel emblem but for our classic marine we're going to use drakenhof nightshade because whilst I would prefer to use Apothecary White here, we are still sticking to the realms of what was only possible with Classic. And that's why we're using this shade paint there. So Drakenhof Night Shape provides a nice cool shading. Now it's generic details time. So we're just going to be applying some Iron Warriors. And we're going to be applying this to all of the silver details. This is going to be the mechanical areas of the bolt gun. Things like the barrel and those back bits and the rack on top and the magazine and things like that. As well as all of the kind of pipes on the backpack. And finally, we're going to apply some Retributor Armor. And this is going to be over the top of any decorative details on the weapons, as well as the bolt casings, the actual bolts themselves, the ammo, in the magazine on there as well. Just for the sake of keeping the paint list down. And there we have it. Both of our Marines have got all of their base coats on, and they both look fantastic there is very much a clear tonal difference here i'm not sure which one i prefer yet we'll find out once we get all of the shading and all of the highlights on but you can absolutely tell a difference here unlike with the blood angels one because that was a very very simple scheme and i think the bile red scheme absolutely is just so close to that classic whereas this one isn't quite the same but i think you've definitely got two recognizable dark angels and they both look pretty cool at the moment we're going to be shading both of our marines now and we're going to be using Agrax Urshade. We're going to use this to shade the red and the gold details. So this is just going to whack it down over the top of both of the bolt gun casings including the Blood Angels red one and the Mephiston red. And of course we're going to be whacking this down over the Retributor armor on both of our marines. Just a classic marine layer here. What we're going to do is we're going to use some Seraphim Sepia. We're going to use this to shade the bone details. We don't need to do this on our contrast marine because the skeleton horde is already doing a really good job. But we do need to add a little bit of shade and shadow into the Aquila, or Aquila, as I've been told it should be pronounced. And we're going to be applying this over the top of the parchment on the purity seal down here on his leg, of course. And now we're back to contrast and classic, and we're going to use Nuln Oil, and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the silver details, but in the case of this classic marine here, we're going to apply the Nuln Oil over the top of the leather as well. Again, don't need to do this on the contrast marine, but it's worth pointing out here just to get that little bit of extra darkness into that really dark cured brown leather. And here we have it. Both of our marines are now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And I really like them both. There's elements of both that I think look fantastic. And, well, I'll be very intrigued to hear what you think. I really like that killer, though, on the classic marine. <laughs> Got mixed up with my words. But what we're going to do here is we are now going to do the highlights. Because we're not going to leave it at war hipster battle ready. And we are, of course, going to start with the armor. And we're using warpstone glow, as you can already figure out given as I've been rambling on for this entire time, but we're going to use this to pick out all of the edges across all of the armor across both of our miniatures, as we would normally do. As you can see here, the Warpstone Glow is fully applied to both Marines. It's just adding that little bit of structure, that little bit of sharpness to those details. And what we're going to do now is brighten them up even further by using some Moot Green. And we're going to use this to pick out the sharpest, sharpest points across all of the armor. So we've been picking out things like the corners of the helmet at the top here, the areas around the shoulder guards and the knee pads and around the hands and arms and legs. Just kind of looking for those points of light and points of interest as you would normally do when you're applying a spot highlight. And there we go with the armor all finished. We've got two fantastic looking Dark Angels. Um, so there you have it. I can't decide. I genuinely can't decide which I like the most. 
Next up, though, we're going to finish off the rest of the highlights. So we're going to use Wild Rider Red, and we're going to use this to highlight all of the red details, including the wax seal and the bolt gun casing. We don't need to highlight the eye lenses. We'll do those a little bit later with a different color. But for now, just get this Wild Rider Red over all of those sharp edges on both of our miniatures. With the Wild Rider Red applied, we're then going to take Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the black details. And with that Dawnstone applied, we're then going to use some Corax White. I'm going to use this to highlight both of the emblems on both of our miniatures just picking out the edges of the kind of tops of the wings and each of the feathers and that kind of curve on the inside of the wings as well as the sword blade on both With that Corax White applied, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to highlight the parchment on our Contrast Marine, but we don't really need to highlight the Achilla on this chest, but we can do this on the Contrast Marine. So if you want to, you can. Uh, but we're also going to use this to highlight all of the details on our Classic Marine, of course. So this is the Achilla and the parchment. For our classic marine, we're going to take some Gorthor Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight the dark brown leather. We don't need to do this on the contrast marine because the Cygor Brown is already doing a pretty good job. But for this guy, we're just going to a little bit of a highlight just on the sharpest edges. Just to kind of give it a little bit more life. Especially after having done that Null Oil shading over the top of Rhinox Hide. With the Gorthor Brown applied, we're then going to take a tiny little dot of Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to apply this as a highlight going across the underside of the eye lens on both of our miniatures. And we've just got two things left to do, which is all the metallics, silver and gold. And of course, we're going to start with the Iron Breaker, just picking out all of the edges of all of our silver details. Uh, just nice and simple here, as you know, we always do here around at War Hipster Towers. And with the Iron Breaker applied, we're then going to take some Liberator Gold. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the gold details again, just as a little edge highlight, picking out those corners and hard edges there's not many gold details of course on these particular dark angels so this is a pretty quick step so they're all finished but just before we have a quick look at this one i actually enjoyed doing this even more than i did the blood angels one i'm very very surprised by the outcome about how different they are i mean it was always going to happen with the green because green paints I don't know what it is i just kind of struggle with them but yes this is one of those ones where i'm like i really like them both um i might even pick the classic armor over the contrast armor just for that extra bit of darkness for my dark angels but we're yet to see what any new potential dark angels we have come out in the future will look like if they look more like azrael then the contrast recipe is pretty much spot on for that i like them both i think they're fantastic and well yeah, it's one of those ones where I think, yeah, you're an absolute blend of the two. Whichever's easiest should actually be the one for you, especially coming from that Wraithbone primer, of course. So let's go and have a look at them on the uh, the old spinny shot, shall we? So here we have it then, our Contrast Plus Marine looking absolutely fabulous. And I really like it. There is this, that little bit kind of extra warmth to the green and painting all the kind of auxiliary details like the... Uh, the Aquila and the um, what's it called my mind is lost I've fallen apart the purity seal um, is absolutely just so much more easier to do and looks really effective with the contrast paint and I think the armor recipe is really really nice 
Uh, I just, I really like that extra warmth, and particularly when those highlights are almost identical. Yeah, well, they are identical in this case. But yeah, it's it's a really, really cool looking miniature, and I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, I like this new kind of way of doing this with the Carandras green and the Dark Angels green. Uh, again, thanks, Chewie. And now we have our classic marine, and you can see you've got that just much more deeper, darker green that I think a lot of Dark Angels fans are more accustomed to, which does make the highlights kind of feel a little bit more shiny and smooth, um, rather than having that warmth in the contrast one. It's a really tough call as to which one I prefer. I think this one looks more menacing, and therefore is kind of more Dark Angels than the contrast one, but painting those extra details whilst they look effective here you can see that on the killer and the uh, the purity seal as well but i just much preferred doing it with the contrast because it was just so much more quick to do the kind of time difference time saving here was about sort of 15 20 minutes that kind of thing between each marine doing the contrast one was quicker by far because of all those extra steps and all those extra colors which is interesting on a model like this because you've got so many additional ones as opposed to blood angels which were just you know black and red and a couple of metallics and finally here we have them side by side and you can really see a tonal difference between the armors when you put them next to each other now i like the warmer version of the green um but i really like the dark version of the caliban green um but i much preferred doing things like the leather and the black details and all the other kind of colors doing with contrast paint so when i say you know a blend of the two maybe using something like caliban green recipe for all the armor but contrast for everything else absolutely is the way forward for dark angels i mean i really like using contrast paint so i'll continue to use things in contrast paint but i just i think there's just a slight edging forwards in terms of that darkness of the caliban green I really really like it I think it looks nice and sinister for Dark Angels and well that's the end of the video so I hope you enjoyed this one I hope you found it useful do let me know in the comments below which is your favorite uh, or whether you're intending to use either recipe or indeed a blend of the two really really fascinating this one and I enjoyed it and do let me know what you want to see next if you enjoyed this video you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you you can do so head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.